Hi everyone, my name is Athena Van Overscheld and I'm a recent graduate of the University of Miami's Rosensteel School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences. I got my Master of Professional Science degree in underwater archaeology. So today's talk is going to be a little bit about underwater archaeology, uh, what that is, why we do it, and how we do it. So what is archaeology? Archaeology is the study of human history and cultures through what they left behind. This could be stone tools, pottery, or even buildings. Underwater archaeology is the same, it's just underwater. Underwater archaeological sites cover a huge range, including places where people once lived or visited that are now underwater because of rising sea levels. It could be wrecks like shipwrecks or aircraft and even items that are disposed of in bodies of water. So what is so important? Why do we do underwater archeology? span There is so much we can learn from archeology span and from the history of the people that came before us and from their stories. For example, shipwrecks, they can teach us about trade. They can teach us about navigation. They can teach us about different types of warfare and how battles were fought. They can teach us about how diseases spread around the world. Today, a lot of these sites, especially shipwrecks, they can act as uh, artificial reefs for fish and for coral. So they actually become a really important part of the ecosystem. So being able to protect these sites and ensure that they remain there and um, can not only be viewed by us and future generations, but can continue to protect uh, the creatures of the sea as well. So how do we do underwater archeology? span Well, we use scuba gear and we spend a lot of time on boats. You may have seen the different ways archeologists dig on dry land, but underwater poses a lot of new challenges. We usually have to take a boat to the sites. Um, so you have to be really, really comfortable on boats and in the water for extended periods of time. Uh, we also have scuba gear. So we have the regulators, which is the what you use to breathe. We've got the tanks. Uh, tanks can hold, you know, roughly about 45 minutes to an hour worth of air, kind of depending on how you breathe. Some people can make them last for longer. I can make them last about an hour. <laughs> Uh, we've got the buoyancy compensator, which is or no, otherwise known as the BC. Uh, it's the vest that scuba divers wear and it helps that keep them buoyant in the water. So what do we learn at the University of Miami when we study underwater archaeology? We learn so many different things. And one of the great things about this university is its location. It is so close to so many different underwater archaeological sites and shipwrecks. So you really get some hands-on experience. We learn how to map those shipwrecks. Mapping on land is obviously already challenging enough. And mapping underwater is even more challenging. We have a research station called Broad Key Research Station, and we do a week over spring break and two weeks over the summer. And we are based there and we go out every day and we learn to map the shipwrecks and we learn the different ways to survey the sea floor with technology called a magnetometer and a side scan sonar. Um, here you can see two of the students setting up the boat, uh, getting it ready to go out on the sea the next day for surveying and for diving. Um, and we also are really lucky. We get to meet so many underwater archaeologists that are working already on some pretty amazing projects. The uh, bottom right hand corner, you can see a picture of us in Mexico. We were really, really lucky and we got to go help out. Uh, at an archaeology dig in Mexico. And we got to go out every day and we were helping survey and we did some diving. And it was really just an amazing experience. And we were really lucky to be able to join them.
So what did I do for my thesis? Uh, I was really lucky. I got to work with Biscayne National Park. Uh, they have a maritime heritage trail site there. It is made up of six different shipwrecks, which you can see here on the map. And you can actually visit these shipwrecks. Uh, they are great places to go snorkeling and scuba diving. Uh, the first wreck, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, a, a few of them so you kind of see what we do and the, the research that goes into underwater archaeology. So the first ship is Mandalay. It was a schooner that was built in 1928. Uh, at one point, the military used it to patrol the east coast of the United States during World War II. Um, they were patrolling and looking for German U-boats and protecting the coast. In 1966, the vessel was taking a group of people back to Miami from the Bahamas, and it hit the shallow reef and wrecked. Uh, thankfully, all of the crew and passengers were saved, and the vessel now lies in 13 feet of water, and it's probably the best site for snorkeling. Uh, the video that you see here is the site um, and two of my fellow students. So the last ship I just wanted to show you guys because this is more of the typical uh, wooden hulled ship. So any ship that is um, not made of iron entirely, uh, this is pretty much all that's left. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see it just looks like a pile of stones. Um, these are actually called ballast stones. They are placed in the bottom of vessels to balance them out. Uh, and because of the, the where we are in Miami, there's, there's no wood left. It rots away really, really easily. So most of the time, the only thing that we have left are the ballast stones and any artifacts that are still in the area. Unfortunately, this site has been uh, picked over a lot by many different people. So there are no artifacts left and we don't know the name of the ship. We don't know anything about it. Uh, and unfortunately, that's just something that happens when we don't have any artifacts to go. Thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoyed looking at all of these pictures and learning a little bit about what we do in underwater archaeology at the University of Miami. Um, if you get the chance to go exploring or you ever come across a shipwreck, please remember how important it is to protect these sites and to take only photos and leave only bubbles. Thanks.